Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. I'm 22 years old and I'm still a virgin. It's not fair. Every night I go to sleep, I wake up, and I think of those young men, young women that have died, and were injured, and were terrorized, and my son did that. Oh, check it out. There's me. And all my fabulousness. <laughs>22 years old, and I'm still a virgin. It's not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. Alongside that, sex became an obsession for the young man, too. He wrote in his journal that he would always fantasize about it, but could never get it. His father said that he had tried to talk to him about this issue and reassure his son that he would get a girlfriend someday. Still, when Elliot displayed signs of nervousness about girls, his father assumed that they were just normal teenage jitters. By the time Elliot reached his 18th birthday, the shy young boy had vanished, and in his place there was only resentment and anger. Being too terrified to approach young women, Elliot deemed it easier to just hate them. Also around his 18th birthday, Roger began rejecting mental health care and further isolating himself from others. And that's when things started taking a turn for the worst. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm sitting in my car making another entry in my collection of vlogs. Today I want to talk about the kind of men that girls are attracted to. 
You see, ever since I hit puberty, I've wanted girls, I've desired girls, I've been sexually attracted to girls, but they've never shown any attraction back to me. And during that time, I've tried to question why. In his journal Manifesto, Roger details some early incidents, such as throwing coffee on a couple he was jealous of, or splashing coffee on two girls for not smiling at him. In July 2013, after being made fun of at a party, he tried but failed to shove some girls over a 10-foot ledge. Instead, other boys at the party had pushed him and Elliot injured his ankle. When he returned to collect his sunglasses, he was once again mocked by his peers and beaten. As Elliot made his way home from the party, a neighbor recalls seeing him cry and vowing to kill the men involved and then himself. In his manifesto, Elliot wrote that the incident was the final straw for him, and after that he started planning his attack. Elliot had been purchasing firearms since November 2012 and had completed his gun collection sometime in 2013. All the weapons he had bought he purchased legally in Oxnard and Burbank, California. Gun law experts have said that there was nothing in Roger's known history that would have prevented him from making these legal firearm purchases. Elliot would go on and carefully plan his Retribution Day, while also uploading some bizarre videos on YouTube. While none of the videos contained any specific threats, his parents still got worried and called Elliot's life coach, who then contacted the Santa Barbara District Mental Health Hotline. The hotline would go on to alert the police, who went to make a welfare check on Elliot. But, as always, the young man was good at masking. He was polite to the six officers that showed up and told them there was nothing to worry about. So the officers left without asking any more questions or running a gun check. As the police left, a wave of relief passed over Elliot. In just a few weeks, his day of retribution would arrive. Elliot Roger here. Right now I'm going on a little tour through Isla Vista on a Friday night. Every time I drive through this place, I am overcome with rage. Because I see so many guys walking around with beautiful blonde girls, enjoying their lives. While I've lived here for, for more than two years, I've had to watch other, other boys experience the life that I deserve. On that day in May, that Memorial Day weekend, Elliot Roger would kill seven people, including himself, wounding 13 others. His attacks began at Elliot's apartment on Seville Road, where he killed three men by stabbing them multiple times. The first calls for help just before 9.30 p.m., but we now know it may have been many hours before that when police say Roger killed three men inside his own apartment, all stabbed repeatedly. Two of the victims were confirmed to be Elliot's roommates, while the third one was a resident just happening to visit the apartment at the time of the killings. After the stabbings, Elliot left his apartment to get coffee. At around 8.30 p.m., he was seen working on his laptop in his car in the parking lot of his apartment building. He uploaded his retribution video at 9.17 and sent his manifesto email at 9.18. His manifesto was a 107,000-word journal in which Elliot had detailed his life and innermost thoughts and desires. The document was sent to his family, therapist, school teachers, and childhood friends, 34 people in total. Once all his online affairs were in order, Elliot drove to the Alpha Phi sorority house and knocked on the door for a few minutes. When no one answered the door, he opened fire on the people nearby. Two women were killed and a third was injured. Elliot hopped back in his car and started driving again, firing into an unoccupied coffee shop and a deli. A man was shot seven times and killed. From there on, Elliot would fire indiscriminately at whomever happened to be on the street while also firing at passers-by. On one of the streets he found himself on, Roger would go and exchange fire with a sheriff's deputy who was responding to a telephone report. 
but instead, two pedestrians were struck. I thought that was my last moment. I thought I was going to die. Survivors say the suspect was smiling as he shot at them. Having escaped the deputy, Roger continued driving, shooting at people and striking them with his car. On Sabado Tarde, near Little Acorn Park, Roger exchanged gunfire with three sheriff's deputies and was shot in the hip. Pursued by police, he turned south onto El Embarcadero, then west on Del Playa. He struck a cyclist, then crashed on the north sidewalk just east of the intersection of Del Playa and Camino Pescadero. Deputies chasing after him in his black BMW exchanged gunfire with him twice. The rampage ended with a crash. It would appear as though he took his own life. Found in Roger's car, three semi-automatic handguns. Nobody needs to own three semi-automatic handguns. At 9.35, Roger crashed heavily into a parked car. Officers rushed to it. In the driver's seat, they found Roger, his black Sig Sauer pistol loaded and cocked next to his hip. He was dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. In the car, there were three pistols, knives, six empty 10-round magazines, and 548 rounds of unspent ammunition. The whole attack had taken around eight minutes, in which it is estimated that Elliot had fired 55 9mm rounds. By the end of it, 14 people were wounded and six were dead. Some of those shots killing 20-year-old Chris Michaels Martinez. Investigators say the deli was one of 10 places Friday night right next to the UC Santa Barbara campus where 22-year-old Elliot Roger hurt or killed people during his mad drive around town, hitting students like Nick Pasichuk, who tonight is still recovering. Not including Elliot. One of the individuals who was shot, Bailey Maples, recalls Roger's unsettling laughter, a laugh that would soon become disturbingly familiar to both investigators and the media in the following days as his online activities would come to light. An investigation into Roger's online life at the time of the attack found evidence of hatred and premeditation. Roger had made a number of threatening YouTube videos and was a member of an insidious online community on a message board site called PUAHate.com. In Elliot's apartment, along with several blades and a printed version of his manifesto, was a diary. The final entry in his diary simply says, This is it. In one hour, I will have my revenge on the cruel world. I hate you all. In the aftermath of such a tragedy, the question that seems to be on everybody's mind is what can be done to prevent this from ever happening again. While California is known to have some of the strongest gun control laws in the US, Elliot seemed to have no problem gathering all the ammunition he needed to pursue these heinous crimes. He flew right under everybody's radar, so much so that even though his father knew Elliot was writing something, he had no idea that his work would become a manifesto and that there was so much evil right beneath the surface.